Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over angular momentum. You've already seen linear momentum at higher level, but this time we're gonna relate it to angular motion. So let's get going. So it says here for angular momentum, just as there is momentum for linear motion, there is also angular momentum for rotational motion. Consider a particle of mass m rotating at omega radians per second about the point O as shown below. So here we've got our point O, our angle of velocity omega, and we're considering a mass m at a distance r away from that axis of rotation, just like we discussed for torque and moment of inertia. Imagine that mass has a linear or tangential velocity v moving off in this direction, but it's gonna have its angle of velocity making it move in a circular motion round here as well. Then because of that, we can say that the linear momentum p of the particle is given by p equals mv from this and this quantity here. So p equals mv, and this was the relationship for linear momentum that you would have seen at higher level. Now the angular momentum, which is given the symbol capital L of the particle, can be given by L equals mvr. So that is basically our linear momentum mass times velocity, the mv, times the distance r from the axis of rotation, so that distance there. And since we have an expression for v for rotational motion, we can say that v equals r omega. So we have the L equals mvr is equal to mr squared omega, and that's just substituting in r omega for the v there. So if we do that, we get the r squared from the r times r, and then we get omega left over. So we get mr squared omega. And so depending on whether a question gives you linear velocity or angular velocity, you can use either of these relationships. And this is given on the relationship sheet in the exam. So here's a breakdown of what all the parts mean. So we've got l is angular momentum measured in kilogram meters squared per second. Now the reason those are the units is because we've got l equals m MVR. So M is measured in kilograms, R is measured in meters, and V is meters per second. So multiplying all that together, we get kilograms meters squared per second. Next we have M is mass measured in kilograms, V is linear velocity measured in meters per second, R is the radius of the circular path that the object is going to take in meters, and omega is the angular velocity measured in radians per second. So all of these quantities apart from L we've seen before. We've then got an expression for considering a rigid object. So for a rigid object about a fixed axis, so one that's going to stay where it is, the angular momentum L will be the summation of all the individual angular momenta, just like we saw was the case for moment of inertia. And since I equals the sum of mr squared, it follows that L equals I omega. So this is our expression for angular momentum of a rigid object, a rigid body, where it's the moment of inertia times the angular velocity of the object. So all we're doing is substituting in I for the sum of mr squared. So that is the mr squared from there, but we're saying because it's a rigid object, we're taking the sum over all the moments of inertia, all the masses. So for for a rigid object, we've got L is angular momentum measured in kilogram meters squared per second, I is moment of inertia measured in kilograms meters squared, and omega is angular velocity measured in radians per second. And lastly, it says here to note that the angular momentum of a rigid object about a fixed axis depends on the moment of inertia. We can clearly see that. And angular momentum is a vector quantity. So just like torque, acceleration, force, and so on, angular momentum will have both a magnitude and a direction. The direction of this vector is at right angles to the plane containing V and R and lies along the axis of rotation. And this is actually the same direction that torque takes along the axis of rotation. So going back to our little picture of the motion, this would be going through the origin point there, through the axis of rotation, perpendicular to both V and R. That's all for now, folks. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.